Look, and you're watching Sporting Icons. All right, everyone. Hope you're all doing fantastic. So WBA have released their new rankings for the month of August. So I'm going to go through the top 15 as I do each and every month with the WBA and the other three sanctioning bodies, plus the Ring Magazine once in a while as well. As when they make their changes, video will follow suit. So make sure you are subscribed. Who else here on YouTube is doing what I do with these rankings? Nobody. So make sure you are subscribed. You're a boxing fan, correct? These rankings will make you a hardcore boxing fan very, very quickly. You'll be ahead of the curve. Anyway, go through the top 15 as always. See what fights recently happened, what fights are coming up. Try and justify their rankings. Point out all the changes. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, let's go straight into it. So Alexander Usyk is the WBA super champion. Daniel Dubois is the WBA regular champion. Number one is Michael Hunter. Number two, Robert Hellenius. Number three, Huey Fury. Number four, Dillian White. Number five, Martin Bacoli. Number six, Arsenbek Makhmadov. Number seven, Trevor Bryan. Number eight, Zahn Kosobuski. Number nine, Lenier Perel. Number 10, Lucas Brown. Number 11, Joseph Parker. Number 12, Andy Ruiz Jr. Number 13, Kevin Lorena. Number 14, Big Baby Jao Miller. And number 15, Ivan Dicheco. So that is an the new 15 for the month of August for the WBA in the heavyweight division. Dropped out of this month are Daniel Dubois, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and Dakari Scott. Now, we're going to start off with Anthony Joshua, of course. Anthony Joshua, listen, he's got that rematch coming up with Alexander Usyk on August 20th, so just under two weeks away. So does it matter if he's, in, if he's ranked in the top 15 or not? Absolutely not. But it does question, though, because for the champion to defend the belt, it has to be somebody in the top 15. Anthony Joshua is currently not in the top 15. So how does that work? I don't understand how that works exactly. Listen, these are the rules for the sanctioning bodies. You have to defend that belt against somebody in the top 15 when it's a voluntary defense. Effectively, even though it is a rematch clause, it still goes down as a voluntary defense for Alexander Usyk. So he's going to be taking on somebody now who's not in the top 15. So do the WBA actually know what it is that they're doing? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Anyway, move on from that one. Um, Dillian White, number four, fresh insert. First time that he's appearing in the WBA rankings for quite some time. Obviously, he's been focused and only been pay paying the sanction fee for WBC for the longest time. He finally got his world title shot against uh, Tyson Fury. He fell short in that one. So now he can concentrate and maybe get a world title shot with one of the other sanctioning bodies. The WBA would be the perfect, perfect route to take currently because the WBA are up next. They, they are the ones that will be called next for the winner of Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua. So Dillian White, he's going to have to try and get his hands on the WBA regular belt. The WBA regular champion currently is Dan Dubois, is up for that winner. Okay? If not, if, if maybe the winner of Joshua Usyk goes fights for Undisputed, then currently Dan Dubois will have to defend that belt against the winner of Huey Fury and Michael Hunter. That's, that's kind of how it works, if, if, uh, if that makes sense. But Dan Dubois has enough time to make a voluntary defence. If he fights Dillian White, who's currently round number four, he could jump straight in. Okay, so that would be ideal, um, especially here in the UK. We would all watch Dan Dubois versus Dillian White for the WBA regular World Heavyweight Championship. Especially knowing that not only is it a big domestic clash, but also the winner of that fight will be fighting the winner of Joshua Usyk. If not, worst case scenario, they're going to be fighting the winner of Michael Hunter, Huey Fury. Again, very interesting. Very interesting scenario. So, yeah, hopefully Dini White chooses the WBA route. Hopefully he works with uh, Frank Warren to maybe get that down to Bois fight. That'd be interesting, okay? Um, Trevor Bryan, number seven, is ridiculous. But again, I mean, we spoke about that last month. Anyway, Trevor Bryan should not be number seven anywhere. He shouldn't be number seven in the IBO or he shouldn't be number seven in the dog shit title. He shouldn't be... Number seven anywhere. He's a garbage fighter. But we know why he's there. He's a Don King fighter, right? That's why he's there. Don King and WBA have an exceptional relationship. Again, we've spoken about that for quite some time. Will Trevor Bryan 
fight somebody worth a damn? No, probably not. But if he does, he's going to lose. We know that much. Um, big play with Jaron Miller. He's still in there, of course. Now he's had two fights since his um, scandal with the PEDs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so he's number 14 in the WBA. But as I predicted um, about a month and a half ago, he will be ranked in the top 15 for the WBA. Why? Because he participated in that WBA tournament night, if you like. The say no to drugs kind of uh, situation, whatever that was, that night over there in Argentina. So we knew that he was going to be ranked. Should he be ranked uh, number 15 in the top 15 of any sanctioning body? Not right now until he gets a top credible win. Is Jaron Miller going to take on anybody in this top 15? I'd like to see it. But if he does, you know it's probably going to be against someone like a Lucas Brown. Let's be honest about it. Speaking of Lucas Brown, number 10, boosted by five positions. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous, but he is the WBA, is it Oceana champion, I think he's called. Um, but is he a top 15 fighter, heavyweight? No, of course he's not. Listen, he's got a very good win over Junior Fire, and that is a very, very good win. And he's living proof that no matter how old you are, no matter how people rate you or don't rate you, heavyweight division, one punch changes the entire outcome of a fight. It can happen. It's happened many, many times. So again, when people say that when two heavyweights fight, it's a guarantee that this person is definitely going to beat that person. No, there's no guarantees with anything. It's heavyweight. doesn't matter who you fight. There's always that legitimate chance that you're going to lose. Okay. But Lucas Brown, number 10, somebody somewhere is going to be looking to take that scalp. Who's that somebody somewhere? I don't know. Really don't know. Um, again, Deontay Wilder. Now, he's not in the top 15, as I pointed out earlier on in the video. Um, he is back in training. Who's he going to be fighting next? There's talk that he could actually be fighting Robert Hellenius. Robert Hellenius was his sparring partner, helping him for the preparation for the third Tyson Fury fight. It's an in-house fight. We know that anybody who's um, joined up with the PBC do pretty much whatever the PBC tells them to do. Okay, You no longer have a free mind, um, if you like. So if Robert Hellenius is told you're fighting Deontay Wilder, guess what he's doing? He's probably going to be fighting Deontay Wilder, right? So that's probably the fight that you would imagine is what's going to happen. Again, would Deontay Wilder go down the WBA route? Obviously, um, Robert Hellenius is the WBA gold champion. For whatever that's worth, I don't think it's worth anything. But maybe, maybe he would. But quite clearly, now he's been dropped, is that is that down to inactivity? Is that down to he hasn't been paying the sanction fees? We don't know. Maybe he's going to continue with the WBC. As we know, even though he's been knocked out in his last two fights, he's still number one in the WBC, which is absolutely atrocious. Nobody should be ranked number one in any organisation. I don't care what you've done if you've been knocked out twice in a row. I don't care if it's, if it's the same person who's done it or not. You shouldn't be. So maybe he's going to go down the WBC route. Um other than that, no great changes. So overall, I mean, it, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's a great top 15. It's certainly not. It's far from a very good top 15. The WBA have the worst rankings in boxing. They do. But it's better than what it has been. It really is. Um, I mean, again, you've got number 11, Joseph Parker. He's going to be taking on Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce, for whatever reason, is not ranked in the WBA at all. But that is number one and number two in the WBO. So, hey, what can you do? What can you do? I mean, the rankings are an absolute joke. But unfortunately, with boxing, these are what the promoters look at. These are what the fighters look at, the managers, the trainers, and everybody else involved trying to make fights. They look at the rankings. They want to try and get to that world title shot. They want to try and get the trinket belts, pick up those along the way to try and get good rankings. Why? Because it's good for your profile to be ranked in the top 15 of anybody. It really is. I mean, what, quite why number nine, Lenier Perel, is ranked so high in the WBA is ridiculous. I mean, Lenier Perel has only had seven professional fights and only beaten journeymen. How could that even possibly be there? It shouldn't be there. In my opinion, the people who shouldn't be in the top 15, I mean, Robert Hellenius, should he really be in the top 15? I mean, he should really be stripped of that WBA gold title as he was supposed to take on, was it Michael Hunter or Huey Fury, whichever one? 
by the looks of it, he turned it down. And if you turn down a situation, because obviously the winner of Michael Hunter, Huey Fury, is going to be the WBA mandatory for currently the regular belt, what Daniel Dubois has. Robert Helenius, if, if, if it's true that he turned it down, you should be dropped. You should be dropped. Other people who shouldn't be in there, Trevor Bryan shouldn't be in the top 15. Uh, Lenny Perro shouldn't be in the top 15. Lucas Brown shouldn't be in the top 15. Gerald Miller shouldn't be in the top 15. Arguably, Ivan Dzeko shouldn't be in the top 15, although uh, Dzeko is pretty good, by the way, from uh, Kazakhstan. Um, anyway, that's my overall view of the WBA. Are they a legitimate sanctioning body who rank the best based on their own thoughts of that is their mind, that is the top 15 in the world as far as WBA is concerned? Absolute bollocks. You know it ain't. We know why some of them are there. Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up, subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.